Hello! In this video, we'll look at handling hazards in the pipeline processor. So a pipeline hazard depends, happens when an instruction depends on the results from a previous instruction that hasn't yet completed. So there are two types of hazards. One is a data hazard, where we need to use a register value in one instruction that hasn't yet been written back to the register file by a previous instruction. Another kind of hazard is called a control hazard, and that's when you haven't decided yet what instruction to do next. So for example, if there's a branch. <coughs> Let's take a look at an example of a data hazard. Suppose we do an add, S4 plus S5 goes into S8, and then the next four instructions all use S8 as a source. So the add, uh, we fetch it in step one, we read S4 and S5 in step two. We perform the addition in step three. We don't use the data memory in step four. And in the first half of step five, we write S8 back into the register file. Now the subtract comes along, we fetch it in step two. In step three, the subtract tries to read the value of S8 from the register file. But it's the old S8, not the result of the add, which doesn't get written into until step five. In step four, we try to read the value of S8 for the OR. And again, this is the wrong value because we haven't yet written S8 in step five. Finally, for the AND, on step five, we uh, read S8. And remember that we wrote S8 in the first half of the cycle. We're reading it in the second half, so now we do get the proper S8. So the AND works, but the subtract and OR produce the wrong answer because they got the wrong value of S8. And this is a good example of a data hazard. So to handle a data hazards, there are a couple of possibilities. One of them is during compile time, we could add no op instructions that just do nothing between an instruction and the time it's needed. So if when we have uh, instruction write to a register and then read to it, uh, there's two cycles between the time uh, we write and the time we can read, so we could put two no-ops in between. If we go back to this code, after the add, we could put a no-op and no-op. And now the subtract won't try to get S8 until cycle 5, and we'd be okay. This is a fairly unfortunate way to solve the hazard, though, because it makes the program slower and also it bloats the program by putting those no-ops into the code. Another possibility is that we could rearrange the code at compile time. So for example, let's say we had this bit of code and then we have some code doing a completely unrelated thing. Maybe we could bring that unrelated code forward and do it while we're waiting for the S8 to be ready, and that way uh, we don't have to um, waste time waiting for S8. A drawback of this is in a different microarchitecture, there might be a different latency between the uh, time you issue an instruction and the time the results are ready, so uh, the compiler may not know what processor uh, microarchitecture it's running on, and it might not be able to optimally rearrange the code. Another possibility is to forward data in the hardware at runtime. So coming back to this picture, the answer of S4 plus S5 is actually known here in cycle three at the time that the subtract needs to get it. So if there were a way that instead of waiting for S8 to go back through the register file, we could forward it in hardware during cycle three, then subtract could have the value it needs. Uh, that works in this case. It's not always possible. So one more option is to stall at runtime. And in a stall, the hardware detects that there's a hazard, that information is not yet available and it has part of the pipeline stop until the uh, information becomes available. So let's look at these options of forwarding installs. 
Uh, first here, this was the no-op example. Uh, here's forwarding. So S8 is computed. In step three, we have S4 plus S5. The subtract needs it, needs to do the subtraction in step four. So we read the wrong value of S8 here, but we could forward the correct value down to the subtractor in step four. In step five, the OR needs the value. So we could forward S8 again. Um, and finally, the AND S8 is written into the register file in the first half of step five, read on the second half of step five. So there's no need to forward to the AND. So to uh, do forwarding, you need to check if the source register in the execute stage matches the destination of a register and instruction in the memory or write back stage. And if so, we forward the result. So here in the execute stage, the source register is S8. The add is in the memory stage, and its destination was S8. So we need to forward. Same way in step five, we have a source register in the execute stage, S8, and a destination in the write back stage of S8. So again, we need to forward. So here's some hardware we could add to handle the forwarding. The black is the processor we had before. Let's add a hazard unit down here to deal with a variety of hazards, and we'll start with forwarding. So to forward, we need to take the value that is in either the memory or write back stage from previous instruction or two previous instructions and bring that around and choose it here as source A or source B instead of the value that we read from the register file. So here we want to forward S8 to source A. The S8 that was in the memory stage. So we could take this value of S8 in the memory stage and bring it up here and choose it as the value for source A. So this forwarding requires some multiplexer controls. We'll call them forward AE and forward BE to tell us if we want to forward a result into the execute stage. And they depend on knowing the source registers um, in the execute stage and the destination register in the memory stage. We also need to know reg write to know if that destination register is actually being used. Because if we weren't going to write the register, then there's no need to forward. So now we're ready to work out the uh, logic equations for forwarding. Uh, case one is that a source register in the execute stage matches a destination register in the memory stage. So if, let's handle for source register RS1 first. If um, source register one in the execute stage matches the destination register of an instruction in the memory stage, and the instruction in the memory stage is going to write the register, then we need to forward. We'll forward for source A um, from the memory stage. Otherwise, if there's an instruction in the write back stage whose destination matches the source we want and execute, and the instruction that's in the write back stage uh, is going to write, then we can forward from the write back stage. Otherwise, we don't need to forward at all, and we'll just take the value from the register file. The forward B equations are identical, except we replace source 1 with source 2. Uh, there's one other subtlety here. Uh, if we were writing to register 0, remember register 0 is hardwired to 0. So any writes to register 0 should be discarded. So we need to check if uh, the destination register was not 0, or the source register was not 0, because we wouldn't want to accidentally forward some junk instead of getting the 0. 
All right, that handled um, forwarding, but you can't always forward. For example, imagine there's a load into S7, and then three subsequent instructions, all of which use S7. So the load, we fetch in cycle one, we read S5 and 40 in cycle two. In cycle three, we add S5 plus 40 to get an address. In cycle four, we read from that address. And now we have the value that we want to put into S7. Um, however, the um, AND wants that value at the beginning of cycle four, but we don't have it until the end of cycle four, so we're unable to forward. This is a case since we can't forward, we're going to need to stall. On the other hand, the OR could forward the value um, from the right backstage and the subtract can, S7 is written to the register in the first half of five, we can read it out in the second half of five. So there's no need to forward S7 to the subtract. So let's look how to stall in a case like this. To do a stall, the end instruction that needed S7, it's not yet available. So let's hold the and instruction up in the decode stage, not let it advance, that's called a stall. Then the subsequent instruction is the OR. It has to be stalled in the fetch stage because it can't move into the decode stage because the AND was already stalled in the decode stage. So if we stall the AND for a cycle, now we can forward S7 from the load to the AND, and we're good. So to figure out the logic for the stall, we need to see if either source register in the decode stage is the same as the destination register in the execute stage, and that instruction in the execute stage is a load word, because load words have require this stall since the load isn't available until the end of the memory stage. So to check for a load word stall, we see if um, source register one or two in the decode stage matches the destination register in the execute stage, and um, the um, execute stage instruction is a load word. Um, for load word, result source is true, so we can uh, you look at that to tell that it was a load word. Now, if it is a load word that needs to stall, we'll stall the fetch and decode stages, and we'll flush the execute stage to just cause the execute stage to do nothing at all um, based on that load word stall. So here's some hardware to do that. So we'll look at source registers in the decode stage and at the destination register in the execute stage and at this result source to tell that it's a load word. If the registers match and it's a load word, then we will stall the fetch and decode stage and flush the execute stage. The stall is done by turning off the enable to the flop. So we'll make these flops enableable and turn off their enable when we want to stall. The flush we'll handle by providing synchronous reset. We'll call that clear. And when you want to flush, we'll assert that clear signal and that will put zeros into the registers and cause that instruction to do nothing because we turn off all the write enables. So all this is a little bit dizzying. You've got to be careful getting the hardware right for flushes and stalls, but it certainly can be done.